Good morning, Buffacorns. Hopefully we ever, we all had a really good night last night after the first day of Youth Denver. I'm happy to announce that we had over almost 4,000 people uniquely sign in to watch Youth Denver on day one. So pretty amazing, I have to say. I mean, it's um, just a testament to the community. If you haven't had a chance yet, go check out the art exhibits. Come to the Gamer Jive virtual event space today. And tonight there's a free roll poker tournament with a 15 ETH prize, or excuse me, 20 ETH prize. So with the, you know, the numbers and where they go, it seems to be a pretty interesting thing. It could be fun tonight. Um, I'm just gonna, we're just gonna cut right into the beginning of our programming today. So um, I'm happy to introduce Joel from Ceramic, Three Box Labs. So let's see if we can get Joel in here. Joel, how are you doing? Hey. Good Pretty good. Well, it's actually the afternoon here, but. Well, yeah. good morning here, good afternoon there. That's the beauty of doing an international event, right? We have actually people that it's the middle of the night too. So um, yeah, take, it, take it away, it's all yours. All right, cool. So, uh, hi everyone. Um, uh, so I'm a co-founder and of Three Box Labs. And uh, recently we've been working on like the next upgrade of Three Box, which is called IDX. Um, and I'm going to jump into kind of uh, how you build applications with IDX. But first, I'm going to give you an overview of uh, what IDX is and kind of the structure of it and like why uh, why building applications in this way is uh, extremely powerful. So IDX is really a protocol for open applications where you can kind of let the users have control. And the nice thing about it is that you can store user data without having to uh, keep your own kind of database uh, uh, for the user. So it's kind of like a decentralized user table. Uh, and you can really store any type of data. So you can store like public information about the user, like their profile or uh, their blockchain accounts or like accounts on other networks as Twitter and GitHub. Um, or you can store private information that's encrypted to only the user or selectively disclosed to other users. Uh, you could store uh, links to data that live elsewhere, such as like textile uh, databases or, or BTB databases live directly on IPFS or Filecoin or uh, point to something on Arweave or some other blockchain or peer-to-peer -peer database. You can also like point to resources in and centralized database, of course, uh, like old data that might not yet have been migrated to, to the Web3 kind of uh, modality of like user centric tr centricity. Uh, so how does IDX work? Well, IDX is basically an index where uh, that's like a key value map from a definition to a record. Uh, and a definition kind of defines a uh, data set. Um, and the record is actually the data of, uh, for, for a specific user. Um, so you can see it's, it's a key value mapping and, and this is kind of the abstract uh, describers of uh, the um, definition and record. So a record, what's a record? So for example, a record could be a profile. So here we have the profile of Satoshi, for example. It could be um, your crypto accounts. So here we have like an Ethereum address, we have a Polkadot address, a Falcon address, a Cosmos address. It could be a list of blog posts. And these blog posts doesn't need to live in the record itself. They could be live, here we have a blog post on Ceramic, here we have a blog post on IPFS, and there's a blog post on Medium. Um, and it could be a social graph, so like a list of other uh, identities that you're following. And these, this is just like an array of the IDs. Uh, so that's kind of what, what the records could be like. So, uh, so each individual user, of course, have their own record. Uh, but the definition is more global than that. Uh, so here is the definition for the basic profile. It's basically is the name, a description, and the schema. So the schema is kind of interesting because it describes the data that is allowed to go into uh, the, the record. So in, in the case of a profile, the schema is tells you like you can use a name, a description, an image, an emoji, and maybe something else. Um, and, and that's basically the definition. And the definition is something that's created by developers. 
um, when they're creating their app and like defining the data model of their app. And the API of IDX is extremely simple. Um, you have uh, to get data, you use basically the idx.get and you uh, pass the ID of the definition and you can pass uh, uh, the, the ID uh, of the user you want to look up. And then setting, a, setting some, a record to IDX is pretty much the same. Definition ID, record ID, just IDX is set. All right, so let's jump a little bit deeper. So uh, I, I kind of talked about the, the, the index and definition and record, and here's like a good visualization of this. So we have definition, it's a ceramic document. I, I won't dive too much into ceramic, but uh, ceramic is essentially a way to create documents that uh, you can update and change uh, in a fully decentralized way. Uh, so definition is a document created by the developer. Schema is also another document created by the developer. And then the user comes to the app. They see that, oh, the app wants to use this definition. Uh, and then the, this record for that user gets created. And in the case of multiple users, uh, you have the same definition, but each user has, so user one, user two, they have their own indexes. And um, the record, they all, of course, have their own records, which uh, the record is also a um, ceramic document. Um, OK. So uh, so let, let's, let's, like remembering these kind of definition IDs is not like super easy. So in order to make the development experience easier, uh, we have created something, or like something called aliases. And this is pretty straightforward. It's just a map from a name to the definition ID, which is this random kind of looking number uh, or set of characters. Uh, so alias is just a map from names to uh, definition ID. And there are some default aliases, and you can, of course, add your own. So let's look at what kind of uh, definitions could look like. So with IDX, you can really store any data, and you can create any number of definitions. Uh, IDX, by default, comes with some basic um, uh, definition. One is, uh, of course, the basic profile. It's a very simple profile uh, definition that has um, uh, a schema. And the schema is basically name, image, description, emoji, and a few other things. And an example record could look like this. Um, crypto accounts, uh, I think I mentioned this a little bit earlier, uh, but a way to link blockchain addresses, so like Ethereum address, Polkadot address, Filecoin address to your uh, decentralized identifier. And the decentralized identifier, the DID, is essentially the, the, the main thing, the identity that IDX is, the IDX data index is associated with. And then there's something called the 380 keychain. And this is essentially what allows you to link multiple uh, blockchain wallets or blockchain accounts to the same DID. Uh, so you can like, authenticate with different wallets, but still have the same identity. Um, you can, of course, like find existing definitions that other developers created. Uh, right now, you need to like browse, go into their source code probably and like figure out what their definition they're using. Uh, in the future, there, there will likely be a bunch of different tools to like browse existing data sets or, or like definitions that um, developers have already created. And then, of course, you can create your own definitions. And I think that's really why we're here today, to explore like how can I create a data model for my application. And when you do this, you create a schema. So here's like an example. So this is a JSON schema. This defines how uh, JSON data is allowed to look like. Uh, so you create the schema. You, you then create the definition. And I'm going to go through this uh, uh, in just a moment. Uh, and then you can add uh, your own alias for that uh, schema. Uh, all right, so I think that's it for the overview. And now we're going to jump into the coding. So we have this um, repo that I've created. Um, it's at github.com slash ceramic studio slash at Denver 2021. And we're basically going to follow uh, this, this simple guide today. 
Uh, and I'm going to use it as an, like an example of how um, uh, you can use uh, or build an app with um, uh, IDX. So the first thing we're going to do is clone this repo. I've already done that. So I'm just going to run npm start. And this starts the application. Um, all right, so now we can go to here, localhost. And all right, so the application is loaded. And the first thing we want to do is we want to change the MetaMask account. So I'm going to use an account I haven't used with this app before. Uh, so let's use account seven. And let's connect. So the first thing that happens, I'm choosing a wallet, so MetaMask. And now this is 380 Connect. So 380 Connect is essentially a thing that allows you to create a DAD and tie that to your blockchain address. And then 380 Connect also allows you to tie multiple blockchain accounts to one uh, identifier, one DAD. And now it's asking me, do, do I want to tie this, this new account to my previous account? And I want to create a new account for it now. So I'm going to say no. First thing that happens is I create, sign a message. This is basically how I authenticate to my DID. Uh, so now the, the 3D ID um, is created in the background. Now I'm requested to sign another message. And this message actually links my Ethereum account to my, the DID that was just created. So this is, you see here, the DID that was just created. And this creates like a link so we can find my data and my DID from an, my Ethereum address. And this, this kind of works with the same for uh, any NFT. All right, so all right, so we're logged in. Uh, so let's just look at in the console. Uh, I open the console here to kind of uh, show 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 you some code stuff directly because that's that's the the most fun part. All right, so the first thing we're gonna do is um, we're gonna await IDX and get index. So so the index is just the mapping from definitions to records. And we can see here that we have two uh, definition and records in, in our IDX. And just looking here, we can't really see what they do that much. Uh, but I know that we have one that's like crypto accounts, because I just linked my Ethereum account to my DID. So let's load that. OK, so it says basically my account here, uh, Ethereum address, uh, 0x573. Um, so X573 is linked and here's like the, the proof and stored as like a ceramic document within here. Uh, I'm not, I'm not going to go super deep into that. Let's try to load the basic profile. Okay, so nothing was said here. Um, so we're actually just going to, uh, add data to our basic profile and this application is already prepared with like a simple function that sets your basic profile. Um, so let's do that. Uh, and the code here is really simple and I can actually show this first. Um, so I hope this isn't too small. I might want to zoom in a little bit. Uh, so let's look in the app code. So we have a um, function here called update profile. And really what it does, it's very straightforward. It takes the name and the description from the, the fields here, and then does idx.set basic profile name and description. All right, and, and that's that's it. So let's copy and it's pretty far it's like messing with me. So let's set this as our profile. And once this has been set, we can call IDX that gets basic profile. And now I can see, oh, OK. I have added, um, a pro I have a profile here. Cool. All right, so that's kind of how you use existing definitions. Um, so now let's create our own definition. So this, this example app. Um, is a note taking app, but but it's secret notes. So the notes are encrypted to myself, but they can also be encrypted to one of my friends. Um, and this this app will store data directly in an IDX record. Uh, you can imagine this app being built where the data is actually stored on 
in the, like each, each individual node is stored on a separate IDX document, which would allow us to update individual nodes. But for simplicity's sake, we're just going to create a definition that allows us to store encrypted data uh, directly in the record. Um, so let's look at the description here of how we do this. So the first thing we need to do is install the Ceramic CLI and the IDX CLI. So I've already actually installed these. Uh, so I'm just going to run the Ceramic daemon. So up until now, this application, uh, this is running against a, a public uh, Ceramic node that you can try to use for development purposes. Uh, but to make it easy to kind of um, publish schema and publish our definition, we want to have them those on our own node that we have on our own computer. Uh, we're going to run a local ceramic node. And this ceramic node connects to the, um, uh, to the clay testnet of, uh, of ceramic. So we can actually send and view documents uh, across these nodes. So the, then now, uh, let's create a DID locally in our development environment. So this now I'm going to use the IDX, um, the IDX uh, CLI, and I'm going to create a DID. So now I created a DID. So as you can see here, this is a key did, and this is kind of less sophisticated than the the three AD did method, and uh, because here you can't like add new auth methods and, and like uh, update the DID. This is just a static public key, essentially. Um, so now we want to create the schema. So schema publish, and we're going to use the local DID that we just created. And the schema that we're going to use is here. So this schema is pretty straightforward. It's um, called secret notes, it has one property, which is called notes, and that's an array of these encrypted uh, blobs. Uh, and these encrypted blobs are JWE, um, and this stands for JSON Web Encryption. If you're interested in, in that stuff, uh, like how encryption works and how authentication works and how that works with IPFS, um, I'm going to have a talk tomorrow that kind of goes through all of that in much more detail. So I'm going to copy the schema. And I'm going to go back to my console, paste it. And now uh, the schema just got published uh, to my ceramic node. And the next thing I want to do is I want to do IDX, oops, definition. And so I created this command before, but I'm going to remove and use the schema that was just created. So Copy that, paste. So the, what we do here is we set the schema of the definition we created to the schema we just created, set so the name of the definition and to secret notes, and we set the description to secret notes for myself and others. Actually, myself and friends. OK. Oh, <laughs> let's see. So OK, the, 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 now we just created this definition. So what's this definition actually? Like, how does it look like? Well. Uh, we can actually, so now this, this exists on my local node. So we can do um, ceramic, uh, we can do show. Oh, that's not good. Uh, I need a space. So this is the content of it. We can also actually load this directly from the clay gateway. So uh, gateway. Clay ceramic network slash API slash documents and let's paste the document ID. And now we loaded uh, the document from the gateway. And this contains a bit more information because this is the entire state of the document, not only kind of the content. Anyway, okay. So yeah, what happened there is like the gateway. Um, loaded the document from my local node on my computer. So the gateway is actually run by 3 Bucks Labs uh, uh, infrastructure. Uh, so that's the two ceramic nodes communicating with each other. OK, so now that we actually created this, uh, let's see, where did it go? Yeah, here, this, this um, mission, we can go into uh, our IDX setup here. And we have this all ASS array. 
uh, and we can just paste that here. And now um, uh, we call create create IDX. We create an instance of IDX and pass ceramic and aliases, and essentially just create uh, an IDX instance that has our uh, definition included. Um, all right, so let's look at what this application actually does and like how it does it. Um, so let's connect here again. So we have two different um, functions here we can perform. One is create a node and one is to view a node. Um, and creating a node, we can either include a recipient or just have the node for ourselves. So uh, very secret. Uh, I'm just going to create this secret node. Um, and once it's been created, uh, so while, while it's being created, actually we can look at how this creation process works. So create node is the function that's being called here. And first we load the ceramic record from, uh, or the IDX record from the ceramic network uh, using IDX to get secret nodes. This is the alias we have created here. Um, and then we get the recipient and the note information from our form here. Um, we set the recipients to be both uh, our own DID. So we have window.did and get the ID. That's the, uh, that's the string of the, the identifier of the user. And we also get the um, recipient that was included here, if it was included. Then we encrypt the note to uh, to both of these DIDs. So we take the node data and the recipients. Um, and essentially what this does, is it resolves the DIDs, uh, takes the public keys and encrypts uh, the information to these public keys. And then we do IDX at set, secret notes, and the record here that we just created. And the interesting thing here is like, if you try to set some data that does not conform with the schema, that data will not actually be allowed to be set to this IDX record, uh, which means that you can have certainty around like which type of data your application actually has. So if you have, for example, have um, create a record that includes um, uh, some some like um, skills or something like that, you can enforce that it needs to have like skill uh, proficiency level and uh, when you learned it, for example. Um, uh, in, in every like skill you add to, to this uh, record uh, as an example. All right, so we saw that we created a note. Uh, let's load the notes. Um, and yeah, we have this note that's called very secret. And of course we can add more notes. Um, all right, and loading the notes is kind of very similar uh, in terms of like decryption and encryption. So we get, uh, let's see, so first we get the, the either you can type in a user here, so the DAD, uh, or you can just load your own notes, which I just did here. Um, and basically we get the notes from IDX, so IDX get secret notes, and then we just take all notes that we get and decrypt them, and then put them into the, the web page here. So let's do something more interesting. So let's copy this DAD and Let's switch to another account. Let's take account three here uh, and reload the page. So I'm gonna connect my wallet. And now uh, we're authenticated with this other DID. Uh, so now uh, if, I, if I try to view the notes so the, for, from the DID I copied, I uh, will I'll not be able to see the secret node. Uh, but I can also create a node that is encrypted to the other user. So let's create this node. Um, and what's happening here is we take this DID, we take uh, my own DID encrypts the, mess the, the, the nodes to both of them, both, the both public keys, and then um, uh, 
and once they've been encrypted, they're added to the ceramic record of my user, like this user that's currently authenticated. Uh, and super secret. And we can create, of course, like something that's not to the other user. So uh, let's, let's do this and let's see how it looks like. So we don't actually want to load the, from the BAD of the other user. We're going to load our own um, data. All right, so this is pretty straightforward. The cool thing now is that we can see that we get the recipient here, and we see the name of the recipient because they filled out the we filled out the basic profile of this before. Uh, so we have um, hello, hello hacker enjoying at Denver, and this is a super secret note. All right, so let's copy the DID of this user, and then let's go back to the other user. So I think this was account seven. And let's reload. Let's connect again. Now let's paste the DID of the user we just were authenticated with just before this. Let's try to load the nodes. OK, so now we see that I see these nodes that the, the other user created, but I don't see the super secret nodes. So we can kind of do this kind of selective disclosure kind of thing. Uh, cool. All right. So one thing that might be a little bit annoying is like now I have this dead DAD uh, the, and this has this like long thing and it's like different from the Ethereum account. And maybe I just know the Ethereum account of the other user. How, how can I load their notes uh, without that? So let's remove that and can, can I actually just load it from the Ethereum address? Let's try, uh, let's paste that here and load. So this is the Ethereum address of, of the, the same user that you created. And yeah, it works uh, the same way. Uh, and this is going to be built into IDX, but right now uh, it, it, it is not. So we need to like have this helper function uh, that's basically is called eat address to DID. And what this does is it takes uh, uh, a blockchain address and converts it into a DAD. And this, of course, only works if this blockchain uh, address has actually created a DAD in the first place. Uh, but this allows you to like uh, find find a public encryption key of that blockchain account, and because they have a DAD. So usually, blockchain accounts don't have like public encryption keys. They're just like a hash of a public signing key. So what we do is we use the Ceramic API. We create a document. This document is called Kype 10 link. Kype 10 is like a standard for representing uh, blockchain accounts in an agnostic way. So we can represent Ethereum, Bitcoin, Filecoin, Polkadot, Cosmos, all of, all of near, like all of, all of the different chains. Um, and yeah, we just take the address that we got and convert it into the DAD. Okay. so. That then that's that's this for this application. Uh, as you can see, like this was very focused on one specific use case, but really you can use IDX for any type of kind of data model that you want to have in your application where uh, you want to store you data, user data. And uh, it, it's really kind of straightforward to create these schemas that enforce the data to be formed in a specific way. And you can store data like directly in the records, as we did here, like either public or, or encrypted, or you can store references to data that's like on Textile or some other peer-to-peer -peer database or on some centralized data, uh, database. All right. Uh, well, I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. And, and good luck on the hackathon. Um, and yeah, thanks. Thanks, Joel. Good to see you. We really appreciate the time that you put into that. It was very informative, and I'm sure that everyone's going to get a lot out of it. Um, come check out the Ceramic in Three Box Labs event space later on in Gamer Jive. They'll be there to answer your questions or in Discord or in Berkeley. Uh, so make sure you engage with them. They've got some really interesting things happening.